Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to do something a little different on the channel. I'm going to talk about uh, healthcare while on the road. And today's topic is going to be Medicare. So let me say this first. I am not an expert on Medicare. I am not an advisor. I do advise people to go learn about Medicare by either um, visiting with a health professional or an insurance specialist or going online to uh, the Medicare website itself. I went to Medicare.gov is what I have my papers on here printed from Medicare.gov and I'll explain some things that I didn't know about Medicare. If you just came here to find out what I you know what I know about Medicare you could probably just turn the video off right now but we're going to talk about what I learned while I'm here in back in my home state and uh, into the parts of Medicare and what Medicare covers etc that I did not know before and this is basically based on the, like I mentioned the medicare.gov website that I went through and printed off and I also met with my insurance uh, agent a few days ago and he uh, schooled me on Medicare because he is uh, trained in Medicare system and had some experience with it so then this is things I didn't know so we'll go right into the video and say you know welcome to the channel and so here we are um, you know we're in the woods in Arkansas it's my home state and uh, we'll talk about Medicare and uh, all, like I mentioned all day before was, you know, about my, my uh, insurance advisor. And the first thing he asked me when I went to the office, excuse me, first thing he asked me when I went to the office was, what do you know about Medicare? And I said, nothing. And that's about all I knew. You know, I was under the assumption that, oh, it's, you know, when you get old, it's, it's insurance, free insurance for the, uh, the elderly. It's not, it's not free, but uh, it is insurance. And so we'll go into that all the details on this a little bit, a little bit later in the video. Well, my dog decided to come poke his nose in front of the camera again. I guess he wants a little bit of attention, so we can work with you know with him up here for a moment. And let's discuss the parts of Medicare. You know, there are. I thought there, you know, I didn't know how many parts of Medicare there were and what they included. But uh, it was just some brief history. I did turn 65 a few months ago. So, and automatically Medicare comes out of your uh, social security check. And uh, I didn't know that uh, either at that time. So that's something more you learn as you go along. But I did turn 65. So I am on uh, Medicare at this time and on social security and living on the road full time with my dog this big white nose right here and uh, so let's talk about medicare um, there are different parts of medicare part a and part b is what is taken out of your social security check each month and uh, the other supplements that are in there the other letters that will come up um, as we talk about it are an additional cost that come out of your um, either your own pocket or maybe add a Medicare if you go through the Medicare system. Uh, part A is hospital insurance. Uh, I'm going to read my notes. I'm going to be looking down. Part A covers helps cover inpatient care in hospitals, skilled nursing facility care, hospice care, and home health care. Now, Part A, is what I understand, is what is paid through your payroll deduction uh, in all the years that you work. So the money that comes out of your Social Security check basically does not pay for Part A. That is funded by payroll deductions over the many years of all the people, all the employees and, uh, and people working. Part B is, um, change my notes here, Part B is medical insurance. Part B helps cover, and there's the word helps. It doesn't cover everything, but it helps cover services, from doctors and other health care providers, um, out, outpatient care, home health care, durable medical equipment, and that is like 
um, wheelchairs, walkers, hospital beds, and other equipment. And it covers many preventive services like screenings, shots, and vaccines, and yearly wellness shots. So like I said, that is a health covers. Uh, what I didn't know either on this, because on this one, it is fun. This is what comes out of your payroll check, um, your Social Security check each month. Basically pays for Part B, as I mentioned. And there is an 80-20 split. Uh, Medicare pays 80% and the patient pays 20%. So and that's something I didn't know either. So, um, And as we go along, we'll cover another one. All right, we'll cover this one here. Medicare Supplement Insurance, known as Medigap. I never heard of that one. So it is extra insurance you can buy from a private company that helps pay your share of costs in original Medicare. You know, any company that's out there that sells uh, insurance can pretty much get you the uh, private company uh, Medigap system. Policies are standardized and in most states named after named by letters, I'm sorry, like Plan G and Plan K. Uh, the benefits in each letter plan are the same no matter what insurance company sells it. So that's a good thing to know because uh, whoever sells it, the um, benefits are all the same no matter what company uh, puts it out. And uh, Medicare options, uh, first when you sign up for Medicare and during certain times of the year, the enrollment period, you can choose which way to get your Medicare coverage, and there are two ways to get that. Um, the original Medicare, as I mentioned, Part A and Part B are the original Medicare. You can join a separate Medicare drug plan and get Medicare drug coverage, Part D. Uh, and you can, with Medicare, you can use any doctor or hospital that takes Medicare anywhere in the U.S. And you can also shop for and buy supplement coverages that help pay out-of-pocket expenses like your 20% copay insurance. And so that's that. All right, we'll go on to part C. So we're going to go through this kind of quick. Uh, and this is like I mentioned, all the stuff that you can, you know, print right offline or look at it. So it's, it's, it's out there readily available. Uh, Medicare Advantage, which is also known as part C. Medicare Advantage is a Medicare approved plan from a private company that offers an alternative to original Medicare for your health and drug coverage. These bundle plans include Part A, Part B, and usually Part D. And in many cases, you can use only use doctors who are in the plan's network. And plans often have a different out-of-pocket expense than original Medicare or supplement coverages like Medigap. You may also have an additional premium. And plans may offer some extra benefits that original Medicare doesn't. So what that kind of means is what my insurance man said, that if you sign up for the Medicare Advantage Part C, it replaces the original Medicare, as I mentioned here. And so you get... It's administered by a third party, so it's administered by an insurance company, but the payment actually still comes out of your Social Security check. So whatever comes out of your Social Security check for Medicare will be pushed over or forwarded to this individual insurance company, and they'll add on their 10% or whatever, and then they'll bill you. And so if it looks like it's really cheap, it's not because... It's basically paying twice, original Medicare and their private insurance, and then they bill you for the uh, the difference. So that's something I didn't know at all. And as mentioned before, anywhere that Medicare is taken in the U.S., you can go to the doctor or the hospital. With the Advantage plan, If it's, it's in a network system. So if you go to a certain doctor and they're not in this uh, a network that uh, the Advantage plan is under, he won't see you probably. He'll probably refer you somewhere else or make you pay out of pocket. And I don't know, but I, this may be different in each state. So there's something else to check into. Um, and that's part of the, the, the what I hear. This is they have different out of pocket expenses than original Medicare because 
you choose, pick and choose, and you're in a network. And if you go, like I said, to certain places, they don't take whatever advantage plan, then you can't, you know, you can't be seen or you will be seen with a higher cost. So, um, and that's something I didn't know at all. So now I'm getting very well schooled on um, learning a little bit about Medicare. I mean, I'm, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There is a whole forest of information out there that is just, you know, yeah, you will get lost in the forest um, of, of words because I have found out there's three things that the, uh, just by reading this, that the government likes to, uh, to do. And one is uh, they like to put in a lot of words and they get really confusing uh, quickly. Um, and number two is they like to change dates. Yeah, we'll go into that in a little bit too. They, they change dates on their own. And number three is they like to penalize people uh, for anything, anything. And that's part of it. I'll go on that too. But there's a penalty added for about everything you do in life. And uh, there, this Medicare is no exception. So here we're going to Part D, which is drug coverage uh, on the original Medicare. Part D helps cover the cost of prescription drugs, including many recommended shots and vaccines. You join a Medicare drug plan in addition to original Medicare. Or you can get it by joining a Medicare Advantage plan at a higher cost and forfeit the Medicare with a drug coverage. Plans that offer Medicare drug coverage are run by private insurance companies that follow rules set by Medicare. All right, Part D, drug. Um, let me get some information that my insurance man gave me. And I had heard a little bit from other sources so and he confirmed uh, the, this this comment this questions this concern i would say is part d drug insurance um and here's what he said he gave me a, a recommendation or a, a story of a, a man that was like 78 years old who was on you know medicare uh, and didn't need any drugs and this is this is another issue too if you don't really need a lot of prescription drugs or depend on a lot of prescription drugs but the time comes when you do need prescription drugs at this uh, as this client said he was 78 years old and he had an issue and he needed some uh, some prescription drugs uh, well this system is one of those uh, you can't go in and sign up for something when you have a problem like uh you know you need drugs or you need a, a, a surgery or something that's really quick you can't go in and just automatically jump on uh, the drug plan the medicare plan and then turn right around and get it uh, get it covered by medicare so yeah his his uh, client said that after 13 years so he was 78 retirement age is 65 he uh needed the drugs so he went to apply for the drug plan well uh lo and behold and what my insurance man and what i've found out too is if you do not sign up for a drug plan when you turn 65 that there is a penalty yep one of those penalties and you will be penalized i think it's one percent of your monthly premium uh, monthly paycheck uh, for each month that you are not on the drug plan. So he was not on the drug plan for 13 years. He got penalized for 13 years of, of, of 1% of his paycheck. And so that adds up. It's not a great, great amount, but it could be. And another thing is what I found out is that even after you sign up for it, and as I mentioned, he was 13 years into his um, retirement. I understand that even though it's paid up, they still charge you the 1% penalty for as long as you're on Medicare and as long as you're on Social Security, which means as long as you're alive. Now, if something is different, somebody let me know, but uh, even my insurance man nodded his head and said, that's correct, so we'll see. But yeah. There's a penalty. And so 
on not signing up to get the prescription drugs. But my insurance man said, if you don't want to sign up with the Medicare plan on prescription drugs, you can sign up with an aftermarket, an independent drug plan for relatively five or ten bucks a month. And if you don't even use any prescription drugs, it qualifies as a drug plan. So therefore, later on in life, if you want to sign up for a Medicare drug plan, which covers more high priced drugs and probably better quality, I don't know, then you are covered. You don't get charged a penalty because you have been on a drug plan the entire time. So something to think about. And I believe on these drug plans also that they are they run a calendar year. So if you get on a drug plan and it's from January 1st to January 1st and you can't change it until after the next due date and next enrollment period. So if you're on a drug plan and you need a high price drug that, um, you know, is covered by Medicare, then you'll have to wait if you're possible, or pay the difference until you're able to change drug plans after the first of the year. And he also said that in some states, some of the insurance is drug plan and other insurance is not, well, as I mentioned, one, cal- one calendar year. So it's not transferable unless there, or let's see how I put this. There's not, it's not transferable or not renewable if there's not a part of the state that supports that Uh, that sounds confusing because it is one of the many you know many 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 words but for instance he gave me an example he had some some uh, clients moved down from michigan they were on a certain plan in michigan they moved down to arkansas and arkansas did not support the plan they're on so the insurance company in michigan was able to let them get out early without a penalty, I believe, to enroll in another plan. So once again, please check with, you know, your advisor, your Medicare person, medical person or whomever uh, that may know more than uh, what I'm saying here. So that's that's part of that. So you have to be careful on uh, on certain things or you'll get penalized probably for the rest of your life on, uh, you know, for not signing up for the prescription drug plan which even if you don't use any drugs, you know, they still want you to have it because, you know, I guess the money goes to, you know, whomever. Uh, and they go on to this one. All right, the last one here on this page is what is the difference between Medicare and Medicaid? I've heard of both Medicaid and Medicare for years, but never really paid any attention. Uh, Medicare is a federal health insurance for anyone age 65 and older. And some people under 65 with certain disabilities or conditions uh, may qualify for Medicare. Medicaid is a joint federal and state program that provides health care coverage for some people with limited income and resources. Medicaid offers benefits like nursing home coverage, personal care services, assistance, paying for medical premiums, Medicare premiums, and other costs. And you, if you qualify, you can have both Medicaid and Medicare. And so what I just read on that, basically, if you get on Medicaid and you need to pay for Medicare, sometimes Medicaid will help pay for Medicare. It just gets more confusing all the time. So (laughs) that is all I have on this from the Medicare.gov. And from what I learned from my insurance man, like I said, You know, everyone just kind of please, you know, go out there and check into things and, you know, with the professionals that know all these information on this, uh, this coverage. And also I found out too, once you turn 65, that you have three months from before or after your 65th birthday to sign up for the part C, part G, part D, whatever letter is out there. And here's where the government likes to move dates. If your birthday is September 15th, for example, and you do the three months, it should be December 15th that you have the three months. Nope, doesn't work. The government says it's from the first of the month. So 
if you turn, you know, 65 on September 15th, for example, you have until December 1st. And if you don't, if you go past that due date, then a lot of times you can't sign up or you start accessing penalties. And so it just gets, yeah, more and more confusing. Um, and what else? And also what I found out, too, that um, on different coverages, if you have to sign up for the Part G that my insurance man mentioned, that uh, if you have a pre-existing condition or health issues before you try to sign up, like doctor's records, you know, et cetera, doctor visits, a lot of times you will not get approved for the Plan G um, for those reasons and that keeps you from basically having an issue before you sign up and then sign it right up and then turn it right around and get medical coverage that's one thing they don't want to be to be out there uh, and so that's one thing to check into uh, is that and also is some of the basic things like vision and dental those are provided through separate insurance companies, private insurance companies. So if you want to get uh, glasses, for instance, um, and, you know, get your eye exam and get your glasses, not covered by Medicare. Um, if you have to go in and get teeth cleaned or a filling, not covered by Medicare. Uh, private insurance is what you'll have to use or pocket insurance, as we call it, uh, to take care of those things. And it's, you know, a really short little note that if these glasses here that I'm wearing now uh, through my insurance that I had uh, working with another company uh, were over $800 in the U.S. And by me living in Arizona through the winter time, I can go down to, Air to Mexico, which is like an hour away, hour and a half away. And I exam and glasses, maybe a hundred bucks. So, you know. Um, that's, that's one thing too, but since you don't have a vision plan or a dental plan, same with dental, you can get tons of dental work down, uh, done across the Mexican border, which is safe and reliable for pennies on the dollar compared to the U S but, uh, insurance is, you know, that's kind of what we all have to do and use. But, uh, I did find out that if you have a issue with eyes or dental that causes other wellness issues like you have an impacted tooth which causes fever which causes you know etc if you have eye problems which you know uh, glaucoma or some some disease that may have problem it usually is covered by medicare but not just the basic maintenance so that's what i found out about that part and then the question comes up maybe about cancer insurance that I don't know much about. I know there's a whole lot of separate policies for cancer insurance that you can purchase out there. Medicare probably covers some of the cancer issues, maybe some complications, but I don't know how much it covers of the actual cancer um, situation itself. So once again, check with somebody who knows more than I do. You're thinking like, oh, this is all great and fine, but what's this free insurance going to cost me well let's give you a little bit of what i know um and i'm going to use if i do like a social security number on a monthly payment of you know to a person on an average of a thousand dollars that's you know that seems to be kind of like where a lot of the people um, in the age group anymore are getting a social security amount and it's easy to multiply and figure off one thousand and it is off some other number so We'll give you the basics. The uh, Social Security Medicare is a set standard right now, $174.70, $174.70 per month out of your Social Security check. I heard, heard next year it's going to go up to like $185, so about $10 increase. And um, the other insurance, that covers A and B on your parts. Um, parts D which is your drug coverage. I think through Medicare is about, I'm gonna say 25 to $35 per month. And you can, like I mentioned, you can get the other aftermarket insurance companies uh, for you know anywhere from four to $10 a month, depending on uh, what, what you want covered. And you still qualify for the drug 
program. And part C is your, uh, not part C, is it? No, I'm sorry, part G. Is a, actually, there are way too many letters in this uh, Medicare system. Part G is your third party insurance, which covers your copay and other things. And it runs from, I'm going to say, $135 to up to $200 per month. And it, it varies, like I said, in state and what coverage you get and what insurance you use. So this is where it kind of, uh, real quick, you know, as you start thinking like, I got a lot of money coming in. Well, here's what happened to me. When I turned 63, I retired and claimed the Social Security. So I had two years of a full paycheck from Social Security. So now here's in my second year that uh, I start withdrawing uh, Medicare. So out of my paycheck becomes the Social Security uh, Medicare that's taken out. And then I have to now buy additional supplement insurance if I want uh, not to be penalized and also to offset any extra costs that may come up on, on Medicare. So if, uh, say, 174 say $175 for the basic uh, Medicare, and we'll go 150 on uh, the Part G. So that is what, and do my math real quick, $325 per month. And then if you want, say, the Medicare drug program. So let's call it $30. So now you're looking at $355 a month out of your Social Security check to cover the cost of medical, Medicare, drugs, etc. That's a pretty good chunk. And so if you're only making, like I said, $1,000 a month, and then you take out $355, that leaves you, what, $645 a month to live off of uh, on your Social Security. It's not very much. It's very tight. It's very, uh, yeah, it's a struggle, and it will be. Even if you make more, it's still going to be, you know, a struggle. I'm living in my bus, not in sticks and bricks. I don't have utilities to pay. I don't have rent. But it's still, I have a lot more fuel and other things. And it's still going to be really tough to make ends meet and hope that nothing, you know, crazy comes up that um, you have to uh, clean out your savings and not have money for other things because you have to have insurance or you'll get penalized. And I think somewhere down there you are able to opt out of Medicare but then again you have no insurance and then when you go to get try to get insurance it'll be probably uh, pretty difficult uh, so that's what it basically you know the cost right now is and Medicare I think next year is um, you know like I said will go up about ten dollars so uh, Social Security will have like a 2.5 cost of living expense um, adjustment the COLA, cost of living adjustment. So if you're, say, making $1,000 a month and, you know, 2.5 is what, $25? Uh, that you're, uh, you will get more from the government each, you know, each month and for that calendar year. And your insurance will go up $10 a month. So you'll get a 2.5% cost of living adjustment. You'll have about an 8% increase in your uh, Medicare but just remember the 2.5 is on your total amount and only the 8% is on your 174.70 so it it is not as much uh, if you were to have an 8% on you know deduction off of your uh, total month big change so that's what it kind of cost and just like I said ballpark figures uh, not exact so everybody will be different but just want to throw that out there um, it gets tougher as you get older uh, it doesn't seem to get much easier at this point so maybe it will maybe it won't we'll just have to keep living to find out and I changed the camera angle because the sun was coming through but yeah that's one thing um, I didn't know either that um, you have to have you have to be healthy to get on it. And, and also, I don't know 
And like I said, just please check with this. If you can even, if you do not sign up by the due date of your third month, which is now the first of the month after your, or before your 65th birthday, they either you cannot get coverage or you get penalized. One of the two. I can't remember exactly what he said, but either way, the 30 days, you know, the three month um, is definitely need to get it done before the, th the three months on the first of the month after your birth date or before. But that's all I have on Medicare uh, that I knew of at this time. And I have not signed up for the Part G and the Part D because I am waiting upon my Medicare identification card to arrive in the mail um, and it's somewhere in the system because as I can mention, um, yes, I'm a traveling uh, uh, retired person. So I travel between, you know, different parts of the country and my mail is sent to Arizona um, for forwarded merit to Arizona and then they forward it to wherever I'm going to be uh, stay, staying at in the country. So, and right now, my Medicare insurance, as far as I know, the, the, my booklet, which you will get in the mail, and a identification card, which you should get, is somewhere in the system, in the postal system, or somebody's mailbox. I don't know exactly where it's at yet, and I do not have my Medicare card with a number to sign up for the uh, supplement insurance. And hopefully I'm working on getting my mail forwarded again, and hopefully I'll get it before the first of the month. So if not, there's an alternative um, that will work temporarily that you can use your social security number, and but they have to have the Medicare number to definitely uh, tie your information in with um, the insurance and yourself. So uh, that is it. We're going to enjoy this nice day and say thanks everybody for following along and let me go over my medicare because i am learning things every day i'm 65 years old and people you do not you don't you know you always learn things and i'm still learning things so and and real quick at the very end if all the anybody out there is in their 20s or 30s or 40s watching and you say Oh, I don't have to worry about Medicare for a long time. I'm not going to retire forever. Well, guess what? Now is the time because it'll be there in about that fast in, in your lifetime. And so uh, it's good to know ahead, but it will be different maybe in, you know, when you do retire. So please, uh, once again, follow the advice or check with the advice of a insurance or a Medicare or medical person that knows more than I do about insurance when you get older. So we're going to end the video and say, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on around the campsite and the road and the highway. And hopefully everybody can stay healthy and safe. <laughs>